Turning now to a brave and incredible student who is taking on Florida's so-called don't say gay law. Xander Moritz is the first openly gay class president at his Sarasota High School. He is also the youngest public plaintiff in a federal lawsuit against Florida to strike down the law. The Harvard-bound senior has been a vocal critic of Don't Say Gay, even organizing a school walkout that hundreds of students attended. Here he is testifying against the bill at the state Senate. If you're doing this for Florida or the United States or for freedom, you are a false patriot and we can tell. My name is Xander. I am a student. I am an activist. I am a brother and a son. I'm a queer man and all of me is threatened by this legislation. Tonight, in a stunning escalation, Moritz claims that he is being censored by his high school after his principal warned him not to mention his activism or the lawsuit in his upcoming graduation speech. He says that doing so would force the school to cut his microphone and halt the ceremony. But Moritz is fighting back and speaking out, organizing a Say Gay initiative that aims to send 10,000 stickers to seniors across the state to wear as they walk across the graduation stage. Just moments ago, we got a statement from the school district saying, quote, all material is reviewed and approved by school personnel to be sure it's appropriate. Also, quote, schools administrators review student speeches for appropriateness prior to graduation in a manner that is consistent with existing law, including the First Amendment. I don't know what that means, but I know that these people will. Xander Moritz is my special guest tonight, along with one of his attorneys in the suit, John Quinn. Xander, um... First off, I just want to say I am incredibly impressed with what you're trying to do, uh, with what you're standing up for, and you are a role model for kids in and out of school and adults as well. So I'm very honored to speak to you tonight. I, I want to start with this. Um, you were told by your principal that they may cut your microphone. Did the principal yeah. specifically say, you know, um, some kind of activism is good or bad? Or did he specifically say, if you mention anything about your queer identity, that they're going to cut the mic? What were the parameters that he laid out to you or that your principal laid out to you uh, when they sort of put out this threat? So the parameters were very vague as the language of the bill is and as everything involving this LGBTQ censorship is. Um, right. I came into the meeting and the room just felt disgusting. It's like when a jury is going to sentence someone to death and they don't make eye contact and everything's choppy and weird. And then they let me know that the reason it was problematic is because the activism is controversial. And that was heartbreaking and made me tremendously angry because I was told that my human rights are controversial <laughs> and then I was told to go have a good day. So, John, I want to ask you this because this is, this is sort of the, the legal question. The don't say gay law specifies that teachers in public schools cannot talk about sexual identity, queer identity, or anything else like that uh, when it comes to instruction in the classroom. Would that apply to a graduation speech? Is that still considered a, a, an instructional environment? I mean, how does the don't say gay law have any impact on what Xander is trying to do? Well, Jason, the, the question you've asked highlights and underscores the vagueness of this law, which is one of its quintessential problems. It prohibits classroom instruction, an undefined term, by right. teachers or third parties, school personnel or third parties. One of the questions we've raised is, does that mean students? What happens when students speak in school about their own identities, their own families? This is highlighting exactly the kind of vagueness that invites discrimination and censorship and what's so critical here, this law isn't even in effect yet. The message from Florida's legislature and Florida's governor has already been heard by school districts. This is all going to get much worse as the bill actually takes effect in July unless it's stopped, which is what we're trying to do. Xander, there are stories like this all over the country of, of young people being centered or being told that their very identity is a problem. I want to take this back to just in your school walking around the hallway. What are other high school students saying to you? I mean, when you walk down the hallway, are people like, hey, Xander, this is really cool. I'm with you. Are the other students afraid of you? Are they being told by their parents, don't be around Xander Moritz? What's it like going to school every day, being an activist in an environment where the entire state is trying to cancel your existence? 
So this just blew up, but I've been working on the activism and organizing that I've done around my rights and human rights for several years. And when it really first started, it, it, it was pretty polarizing in school, but I would say that my community has been excellent and the majority of my peers have always had my back. I have a team there. If I have to run out for a call or do a meeting, I always have someone who will take notes and everyone has been amazing. It's, it's really the community outside of school. That's a problem. I've had people come into my parents' offices screaming about me, looking for me. And it's, it's, it's really outside of school where that community is a problem, but my peers, the people that are in my generation with me have had my back and I'm just so grateful for it because I don't know if I could do it without them. John, so you're suing in order for Xander to, to give this speech and not be censored one way or another, but this is also going to be happening around the country. If there are parents out there watching right now, what would you want to tell them uh, that they should be doing for their young people? Because this kind of censorship, it does happen all the time. Whether a student wants to talk about their sexual identity, whether a student wants to talk about their Black Lives Matter activism, whether a student wants to talk about their environmental activism, what would you advise a parent do if their son or daughter comes home and says, hey, the principal told me I can't talk about X? What should be the next step? Well, first, Jason, I'd clarify, our lawsuit seeks to block implementation of this law throughout when Florida. So not right. just for, for Xander, for, within the whole state of Florida, we're, we're seeking to block this unconstitutional law. As for what I'd suggest for parents elsewhere, you know, of course, I, I'd advise everyone to create a loving and supportive environment for their children, to, to create supportive families, and, you know, to engage with their communities and try to ensure that their communities and their schools, you know, abide by the requirements of the Constitution and uphold the rights and the equal dignity of all of our, our citizens.